worst nightmare is going to start in about two weeks, uh, the Ides of April, <laughs> April 15th. Uh, by the way, let, just uh, d digress just for a moment. The, one of the big stories in the news right now is that this, uh, this big cargo ship coming from the Port of Baltimore ran into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, um, which was built in 1977 uh, on its way out to the ocean. And it appears that the ship lost power as it was heading toward the bridge and issued a mayday call. And that mayday call was uh, apparently heard by uh, the people who were working on the bridge. There was a construction crew on the bridge. And so they started blocking traffic. So no cars were on the bridge when it collapsed, which is amazing. Although there were apparently seven or eight people working on the bridge from, you know, from this maintenance crew or whatever they were doing. And they're, they're looking for the bodies. Um, so into this steps uh, Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace to say that uh, essentially to suggest or imply that uh, this is all the fault of uh, Joe Biden's Infrastructure Act. <laughs> oh, God, where do these people come from? Anyway, uh, and, and, and oh, boy, they're going to pass new legislation to get more money out of the billionaires. They're going to raise their taxes, you know, because they're going to have to replace this bridge. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, back to Donald Trump. Uh, April 15th, his first criminal trial. So far, every trial that he has faced, the E. Jean Carroll rape accusations where he lost, the uh, uh, defrauding thousands of young people who wanted to go to Trump University and learn how to be a real estate mogul, where he lost, he paid $25 million. He's having to pay E. Jean Carroll 80 some odd million dollars. It's, it's on appeal, but. But he actually paid the, the $25 million in the Trump University case. Um, his uh, defrauding banks, insurance companies, and the tax, uh, you know, the, the citizens of New York City and New York State, that, you know, that, that led to the $545 million judgment, uh, that was a civil case. So there's no possibility of going to jail in these civil cases. He does have several cases that have prison as a possible consequence. There's the one that Fonnie Willis is pursuing down in Georgia, and I've, I've got a breaking story on that one that I'm going to be getting to in a few minutes. Um, there is this case. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of possibilities of Trump actually ending up going to prison here. And this, this you know, was always thought as like, yeah, it's not a big deal. You know, he paid off some, he paid off a porn star to have sex with her. You know, uh, do we really get all upset about, you know, rich men paying women for sex? Really? Come on. It's not that big a deal. But it turns out that it, you know, he didn't do it. He didn't pay them off for the sex. He paid them off for their silence. And that's a whole different thing because that's election interference. Because, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the last hour, the, the, uh, you can grab them by the, you know what, the, the, when you're a star, they let you do it. That whole rant, that, that tape had become public, what, about four weeks before the election, three, four weeks before the election. And then, and then, you know, uh, 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 just a week later, Trump is paying off Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, because when that tape came out, that was when Stormy Daniels went, huh? Maybe I should say something about this guy. So this is election interference, and election interference is a much more serious uh, felony crime than tax evasion or, uh, uh, you know, uh, rigging your books in your company. And by the way, that was one of the charges against Michael Cohen. He got three years at Rikers Island for this, for the crimes that Donald Trump committed. So anyhow, this, they came before Judge Juan Mar Marchand yesterday, and uh, the uh, lawyer, uh, Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, um, was arguing that, uh, you know, the, the, the case should be set aside altogether or at the very least postponed um, because all of this evidence was, you know, came in from the, from the Southern District, and, and, you know, it turns out that it was only a couple hundred documents. It wasn't the tens of thousands that were relevant to this case. Um, you know, they did have to go through all of them to figure out which were relevant, but they've done that, and, you know, it's, it's down to, they've figured it out. So the judge is like, there's nothing more to hold this up. And when Todd Blanche kept insisting that there was stuff to hold it up, finally uh, the judge said, 
because you know he and what what Blanche was saying was that the prosecution against Donald Trump had had withheld evidence, right? And there's no evidence of that. There's there's evidence that the Southern District of New York might have withheld evidence, but who knows? I mean, they, they're, they're claiming that they didn't do it intentionally. So anyhow, the judge turns to Trump's lawyer and he says, you're literally accusing the Manhattan DA's office and the people assigned to this case of engaging in prosecutorial misconduct and of trying to make me complicit in it. And you don't have a single citation to support that position. So, you know, they pissed off the judge is the bottom line, which is not a good idea. I mean, they, 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 you know, they pissed off Judge Engeron. And he hit him with a $540 million lawsuit. They, they pissed off the judge in the, in the uh, uh, E. Jean Carroll case. And, or at least the jury made the judge look bad. And so, I mean, you know, this, this is, I think we're, we're in one of those, gee, this is really interesting kind of territory uh, uh, moments right now. So stay tuned on this. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll keep you up to date on what's going on here. But Trump's worst nightmare is about to begin. Now, here's where it gets really strange. I, I, I said I was going to give you breaking news in the Fonnie Willis case. And uh, by the way, they're still looking for six people in that Maryland bridge collapse. Um, Judge Matt Stock, S Scott McAfee ordered that in this case, the Don, Donald Trump, well, let me, get, let me back up a little bit and give you the, give you the, the back story here. Uh, a couple of months ago, two of the defendants, Kenneth Chesborough and Sidney Powell, uh, co-defendants in this uh, case, argued before Judge McAfee that all they engaged in was First Amendment free speech. That when they said that the election was rigged, when they said that there's, you know, there's no problem, when they said that or whether there were huge problems, excuse me, when, when, they, when they tried to make these, these claims and these assertions, um, the bottom line was that, uh, you know, it was just free speech, they, you know, which is protected by the U.S. Constitution, that they weren't engaging in criminal conduct. So, they, so the judge said, okay, fine, you can appeal that. And they did. And their appeal got slapped down by, by Judge McAfee himself. He, he listened to their arguments and said, no, this is not, you know, protected for free speech. So now at the last minute, Donald Trump has made the same claim. He's saying, you know, when I said I'm just looking for 11,400 and whatever it was, you know, 87 votes, that he was merely engaging in First Amendment protected free speech, that this was not a, a a case or an example of him actually trying to steal an election. And so Judge McAfee said, okay, cool, you can appeal this. So day after tomorrow on Thursday, another judge, uh, his name is Sadow, I believe. Oh no, that's the attorney, Stephen Sadow. Um, I'm not sure that I have the name of the judge. And it may be, maybe before McAfee actually uh, from, you know, closely reading this article. Anyhow, he's going he's to entertain an argument that uh, on Thursday that the case should be dismissed against Trump because it's just First Amendment protected free speech. Now, whether that is going to fly, uh, you know, is a good question. Um, he's already turned it down in two other cases. But Trump's lawyer, Stephen Sadow, says that the prosecution of President Trump is premised on content-based core political speech and expressive conduct protected by the First Amendment. And he says the remedy for false speech is speech that is true, not a state racketeering prosecution against the former president of the United States. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If Donald Trump is going to make this claim that this is just protected free speech, see, the, the, the premise here is that under the First Amendment, under your right to free speech, you have a legally protected right to lie. Unless you're under oath or speaking to the FBI. 
Now, if you have a legally protected right to lie, and Donald Trump was saying, hey, the election was stolen, and he was lying, that's protected by the free speech. So in order to make an argument that I was only engaging, for Donald Trump to make an argument that he was only engaging in First Amendment protected free speech, he's also going to have to confess that he was lying about having won the election, that he was lying about election irregularities. So I'm thinking that Thursday could be real interesting in ways that we don't expect. And I encourage you to, uh, to pay attention to this when it happens. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that this will be another one of these, you know, televised things because it's going to be in this Georgia courtroom where there, is, where there are cameras. And I, I believe, I've read a couple stories on this, and one implies that there's a third or a second, second judge that's going to be involved, another... Uh, implies it's going to be McAfee, and I've not seen a definitive, I'm guessing it's going to be McAfee. Um, but in any case, it's, it's going to happen Thursday. Stay tuned. This is the Tom Hartman Program. We'll be right back with uh, more of the news of the day, and now we, I think we have our phones. We're going to find out in just a minute, 17 minutes past the hour.